Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video I'm going to do something I've wanted to do for a long time, uh, basically as long as I've had my 20 ton press. Uh, it's not that I use it that much, but this is just a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, an improvement I've always wanted to do to it. We're going to add a uh, air over hydraulic jack to it, basically convert it from the manual pump to air over hydraulic. Uh, some of the things we'll need to do uh, is get an air drop over there at the press as well. When I added this addition onto the tin bore and took in part of the shelter, uh, or I guess it was two years ago, I plumbed it at the same time with this rapid air. Uh, I used a half inch, uh, I'm sorry, the 3 8 rapid air uh, uh, airline system which is basically the quick connect. Uh, I wound up having to order a T. I had a couple pieces left over from the, that installation, but I got a T in uh, yesterday. And I went ahead and made an air block off camera. All this is is a piece of, I believe it's uh, one inch by inch and a half, uh, inch thick, inch and a half wide, and I cut a piece off about two and a half inches and drilled and tapped uh, for the 3 8 NPT thread for this end for the quick, uh, for the uh, rapid air fitting. And on this end, uh, drilled and tapped for the uh, quarter inch NPT for the quick disconnect, which it appears that's what uh, is on this uh, jack. I've not opened it yet. So as part of this video today, we'll be cutting in the line, putting this T in, running looks like about six feet, elbow down, and then I'll put this drop in uh, to connect the jack to. So let's open this up right quick and see what the jack looks like. This is uh, Torin Big Red Jacks. I looked at the air over hydraulic jack at uh, Harbor Freight and looked at this one and the only difference was the one. this is from Amazon. Uh, this was I think three dollars more at Amazon. The difference being I could have got the 20% uh, discount off of Harbor Freight but it would have meant about a 30-40 minute drive there, 30 minutes at the store, 30-40 minutes drive back. So I'd had close to two hours invested in, in my time uh, just going there, picking it up and coming back. And to be honest with you, the experience I've been having with the closest har Harbor Freight to me uh, seem like they're out of stock more often than not on the items that I want. So uh, I got on the uh, uh, internet Thursday, Friday, ordered this, it was delivered on Sunday. So sometimes the convenience is worth more than saving a few dollars. Right, that's, a, that's a pretty long hose on there. That's probably at least a meter, three foot. I'm going to glance at the manual right quick. I believe I don't remember exactly what it said the operating pressure is or the operating PSI. All right, the manual says run uh, 100 to 175 PSI uh, air supply. My tank pressure I have here at the Zen Barn is uh, 150 PSI and I've got it regulated to a, uh, at the dryer and filter coming in here at a, to 125. Uh, I always turn my compressor off at, uh, at night. Uh, I've got a couple of hoses in here that's got some leaks in them. And, uh, and I think, you know, even in this rapid air system, I think there might be a casual leak every once in a while. So I just simply flip the breaker. Uh, I've got a breaker right next to my light switch for the compressor, turn it off at night. Uh, and if I remember, I shut the valve off at the tank just to save what uh, compressed air is in the tank at the time. 
because it, it does leak down some. I do know I've got one hose that uh, has got a pretty severe leak in it. But another thing the manual says, of course, is to lubricate the, uh, put, some, put some lube in before we start. Let me go ahead and get all this uh, wrapping off. Hope there's none of that coronavirus in the air on these uh, this bubble wrap, so I'm just going to trash it and not uh, spend time popping air bubbles. All right. And this actually says put a teaspoon in of air. I'm mean, sorry, of oil into the airline to start with. Not sure if that's a teaspoon, but it ought to be pretty close. And uh, I'll try to remember to do that often. It says lubricate the air motor with good quality hydraulic tool oil through the air valve once or twice a month. Add oil while holding down the lever. Okay. Let that oil run down in there a little bit. All right, let's hook some air to it. The way these work, of course, you know, all hydraulic jacks have the, the hand pump. And jack is working. This has got, uh, these air over hydraulic ones have uh, some extra return springs on them. All right. And I'm sure I will make a knob for this just like I did in this uh, uh, video. I'll try to post a link to up here where I did some uh, enhancements before to my 20 ton press and put a knob here. So I'm sure I'll do the same thing to this jack. All right, let's see. Let's hook a little air to it. Let's see. going to take a lot of air, no doubt about that, but it is definitely uh, working working as expected. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn around to the, uh, get the camera set up over on the 20-ton uh, press, and we're going to take the existing manual jack out, put this one in. Uh, hopefully it won't vibrate quite as much when it's on the press as it did on this uh, workbench. Okay, over here at the press now, uh, I'm going to tilt the camera up. The light may wash it out just a little bit. But right there where that blue line is, that's the rapid air line feeding, the, uh, feeding through this section of the tin barn. We'll have to run from there to where we tee off. And then we'll come right up to, th to that truss or floor joist uh, right above the press to put our drop. But for now, let's get the jack set in. To assist in uh, uh, taking this jack out and putting the other one in, I've got some uh, pieces of just scrap lumber cut here. All right, and that should allow taking pressure off the jack and keeping the uh, platform down. Now, interestingly enough, when I got this jack, or got this press, there's no holes drilled in this mounting plate or the jack, so uh, I simply put a little, as a temporary fix, put a little two inch C-clamp up there, and it's been there 
for two years and two or three years, ever how long I've had this press. All right, so we'll get this jack out of the way. I'm going to do a quick measurement and be sure I've got enough room there. I spoke wrong. There is some holes drilled in here, but there was no holes in the jack. The jack right now is about 11 inches. So that should go in. And of course, I want the handle uh, to be out the front side of the jack just like the other one. And I'm going to leave these extra springs on here. Uh, as you saw before, manually returning the jack on that other one was not all that simple. And I could tighten these down some, but since these are on there, I want to leave them from now until I see that they're in the way, if they happen to be. I'm going to run this center up just a little bit to make room for that. All right. Curious if my, yes, my modified handle from the four will, will work on this. Now that returns very nice, very good with all four springs on. I'm going to see if my little C-clamp, yeah, it's deep enough, and that will hold that temporarily. All right. Airline, probably going to need to feed up through here. I think I'm going to walk that probably no higher than right there. So, just taking some measurements here from the, uh, uh, the ceiling of this room, which is actually the floor of uh, the second floor. If that air drops about two foot. I'm going to make a, uh, get a few things set up, and then I'll bring you right back when we get ready to put this airdrop in. All right, I've got the camera moved over now. And as you can see, right above the press, I've put a, just a little piece of a one by two drop down right above the press and got the uh, airdrop, the uh, terminal block there. To give you a little per perspective on where we are in the tin barn. Of course, there's a surface grinder. Toolboxes are in the uh, other section, the section I added on to the tin barn a couple years ago. And straight behind the uh, surface grinder is my lathe. And of course, straight behind that is the doors coming in to the, uh, to the tin barn. But again, in that other section, at the end of the lathe, behind this set of shelves right here, is the milling machine. You may be familiar with the uh, shower curtain I've got at the end of the milling machine to try to keep some of the chips and the, uh, the coolant off, off my desk. But this is over in the uh, what was ori the original uh, machine shop portion of the tin barn. Uh, got my little closet over there that's uh, behind that or behind this wall right here is the stairway that goes up to the second floor uh, the sheet metal shear sheet metal break uh, shelves there uh, doorway into what I call the dirty section of the tin barn that's where the welder and the grinders and the sanders and buffers and all are uh, horizontal bandsaw Wilton vise Right beside the drill press is the uh, uh, vertical bandsaw that you saw in just a previous video. And that door right there is what's going to go into what I hope is going to be a restroom here in the tin, tin barn before too much longer. So now that you got a little perspective of where we are, 
and I know this is going to wash out in the light some, but right above is the air line. And that's what we want to tap into and put the T. Rapid Air supplies these little cutters that uh, make cutting that air line very simple. All right. I've measured the drop that I put over the uh, over the press, and it's ten and a half inches from that floor joist. So. I think that's going to be right where this clamp is. It is, so I need to move that clamp. And it looks like for a T. I need to take out about a about a half inch of the uh, of the pipe itself. So I'll go about a quarter inch on each side of my mark. Oh, and I did obviously release the pressure. These are nothing more than conduit clamps. All right, I need to step over to the other side and pick up a piece of hose. All right, I'm just going to run this hose right straight across. I'm not going to try to uh, not going to try to follow the floor with it, the ceiling to this part. Now over here at this side, I'm going to put my elbow on, and I'm just going to run a little drywall screw. That should be all there is to it. I might go ahead and put me a little clamp right here. All oh, that seems to be fine. I'm going to put another clamp back over here on the uh, other side of the T so that there's a clamp on each side of the T. All right, now I think I'm ready to go turn some air pressure back on. I'll leave the camera right here so y'all can see if I got a blowout to begin with. All right, so there was 125 pound PSI on it. Get the camera repositioned so that you can get an idea of, uh, of how this is going to work. Okay, I've got the camera moved again, and just to give you a little bit of perspective again, this is that closet that I said was under the stairway that goes up to the second floor. There's the metal shear, the uh, uh, metal brake, shelves. That was a door that I said went into the uh, dirty part of the uh, tin barn. 
There's some metal storage, uh, 1940s drill press, my little X2 mill with the uh, blue DRO on the wall back there and the uh, uh, tablet mounted to the wall. Uh, there's another door that goes into the, uh, uh, to the dirty section. Now we're back around to the press. I took my little handle off the 20-ton uh, jack that was on the press to begin with. I made this in an uh, earlier video. Again, I'll try to post a link to it up here to that video of where I made this. It will not fit on this jack, so I'm going to make another one of them off camera. And probably while I'm at it, I've got two more hydraulic jacks uh, that I've purchased since, since I made this. And these are just so convenient. Instead of trying to get the handle out to open and close the, the valve, I'll probably go ahead and make a couple of these for the, uh, those other two presses as well, the other two uh, jacks as well. All right, air is attached now. Uh, valve is closed. And this, uh, this latch up here, or this uh, valve up here, does have a way to lock it in place if you got a long stroke that you need to run. And with the two sets of springs on here, of course this set of springs will help pull the jack down and then these will pull the whole the whole press system up. So I don't think these are going to be in the way at all. All right. I don't have anything to press right now, so uh, uh, I'll just have to take my word for it, and I'll have to take its word for it that it's going to put the 20 tons on there. Not that I'll ever need 20 tons. But uh, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I will be using the press in some upcoming videos, so uh, uh, keep an eye out on the channel. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.